the early days of our republic, Americans watched Yankee clippers glide across the many oceans of the world, manned by proud and energetic individuals, showing our flag, breaking records for time and distance, opening up new vistas of commerce and communications. Well, today, I think you have helped recreate the anticipation and excitement felt in those home ports as those gallant ships were spotted on the horizon heading in after a long voyage. The fourth landing of the Columbia is the historical equivalent to the driving of the Golden Spike, which completed the first transcontinental railroad. It marks our entrance into a new era. The test flights are over. The groundwork has been laid. And now we will move forward to capitalize on the tremendous potential offered by the ultimate frontier of space. When thousands of civilians began pouring onto a military base, located on a desert in the middle of summer, early on a Sunday morning, one could sense the day's events were going to be special. Spectators came to Edwards Air Force Base from all over the nation and all walks of life to celebrate the nation's 206th anniversary of independence and witness historical events more spectacular than the typical 4th of July fireworks display could ever hope to equal. The fourth landing of Space Shuttle Columbia, world's first reusable spacecraft. Columbia's first landing on a concrete runway, officially ending the orbital flight test program. Takeoff of the second orbiter in the shuttle fleet, Challenger, on its ferry flight to Kennedy Space Center, Florida, to be launched into space in the early part of 1983. And with Shuttle Pathfinder Enterprise as backdrop, the announcement of America's new space policy by President Ronald Reagan. Beginning with the next flight, the Columbia and her sister ships will be fully operational, ready to provide economical and routine access to space for scientific exploration, commercial ventures, and for tasks related to the national security. Simultaneously, we must look aggressively to the future by demonstrating the potential of the shuttle and establishing a more permanent presence in space. Our goals for space are ambitious yet achievable. We've only peered over the edge of our accomplishment. Surely, our accomplishments began with Columbia's first launch in April Looking back at that spectacular event and the performance of Space Shuttle during its first four flights, there seems little doubt now that it is a reliable, reusable space transportation system. When Columbia first arrived at Henry Space Center in March of 1979, there was some skepticism. Two factors were leading to major delays in the launch schedule. 
The quest to advance the state of the art in space technology, particularly in engine design and thermal protection, plus budgetary limitations imposed on development and testing of shuttle systems. With two-thirds of shuttle's tiles already on the vehicle, it was discovered that the bond was not strong enough to keep the tiles from falling off during high-stress phases of flight. The fix, called densification, required that most of the tiles be taken off, coated with the material to increase the bonding strength, then reapplied to the vehicle. The process took over one year to complete, but it worked. During the orbital flight test program, only undensified tiles showed weakness along their attach points on non-critical areas of the vehicle. Shuttle's main engines achieved the state-of-the-art in rocket engine technology. But as with any research and development program, confidence in the design came only after years of testing, learning, and some mistakes. Problems encountered during development of the engines were related to the unique requirements that had to be met. Reusability. Up to 55 flights with minimum maintenance. Ability to throttle down to 65%. Lightweight. Yet the capability to withstand extremely high chamber pressure. Pressure needed to generate the thrust for liftoff. Many failures that occurred were due to the tremendous pressures and vibration levels created trying to produce the needed thrust. But one by one, the problems were solved. The design was proven long before the first launch. within 15 months, traveling over 8 million miles during the first four flights. Three hundred and fourteen revolutions around the Earth. Nineteen days on orbit. But beyond the statistics, a far more important goal was achieved with completion of the orbital flight test program. The foundation for our future was built step by step, mission by mission. The goal of STS-1 was, quite simply, to get up and get down safely. Columbia Houston, uh, you guys did so good, we're going to let you stay up there for a couple of days. You're going for on orbit. When astronauts John Young and Robert Griffin heard that announcement, they knew the mission was at least half a success. When returning from space, friction created by entering Earth's atmosphere blocks communication between mission control and the astronauts for 15 to 20 minutes. But it is also precisely during that time that temperatures on the vehicle surface reach their peak and shuttle structure undergoes its most stringent test. On Columbia's first flight, no one could predict exactly how shuttle would perform during that phase. Hello, Houston. Uh, Columbia's 
With voice contact re-established, spacecraft and crew has safely passed through the most critical phase of entry. Landing was the final test. Flown as a glider, Columbia landed without power on the first and only attempt. They're coming. Go down. Look at these. 1 was activated. The package, composed of low-cost, commercial-grade sensors previously flown only on aircraft, and instruments flown on individual satellites or past manned missions, collected the first Earth resource data using shuttle. The ability to mount all three types on Columbia greatly reduced the expense of acquiring the data. truly a reusable space transportation system. Third flight of Columbia was primarily a thermal test of the vehicle, exposing it to the most extreme temperature differentials it could encounter on orbit during upcoming operational flights. No facility on Earth could simulate the same heating conditions Columbia would experience in the vacuum of space where temperatures could vary greatly from one end of the orbiter to the other, depending on its orientation to the sun. The thermal tests determined precisely what effect different attitudes had on shuttle structure. The vehicle suffered no adverse effects. Evaluation of the remote manipulator system continued on Flight 3. Astronauts Jack Lausma and Gordon Fullerton tested the system's payload handling capability. First order of business was unberthing. Although clearance around the payload was only two inches, Fullerton unberthed in just five minutes, much quicker than had been predicted pre-flight. Using the plasma diagnostics package, seven computer-controlled automatic movements of the arm were evaluated to prove scientific instruments could be maneuvered in and around the payload bay. <laughs> 